No matter how competent you are fixing your bike and working with tools, from time to time it can actually be really easy to slip an Allen key and round out the head of a bolt. Uh, in particular, things like those little four millimeter stem bolts, or perhaps the tiny little two and a half or three mil bolts you have holding on your handlebar grips. Uh, more often than not, this will happen when you're out on the trail with a regular trail style multi-tool, and perhaps you've just not had enough purchase and you just slipped and rounded the head out. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways to get those bolts out, two of which have never failed me. In an ideal world, when you put your bike together, you would be using a torque wrench, and of course you would be using grease or anti-seize in the relevant places, but it doesn't always happen, and sometimes we can all hang off an Allen key too much, over-tightening a bolt, meaning it's very tricky to get out. Now, ultimately, how mashed up the head of the bolt is will dictate how you're able to get it out. Number four, which we're gonna to get to later in the video, is the extreme method, which will always work, but you do require some power tools. Option one, we're gonna go straight to now, I like to call traction key. Now, if you look up close here, I've got an old hope stem and I've actually rounded out some of the heads of these bolts in advance for this video. One of them is completely hopeless, there's nothing on here, in which case you will need a more extreme way of getting it out. But this one here should look quite familiar to you. I think we've all done one of these before. Now, the Allen key does go in, but it's really quite a bad fit and you're quite aware that any sort of pressure on it means it's gonna slip. But the fact it can still get purchased means you might be able to rescue this by using a bit of rubber. Now the concept of this comes from drilling with screws. Now it's quite easy to round out ahead of a screw, but you can add extra traction by putting a rubber band over the top of that screw and then leaning on your screw bit basically to undo it. it gives you traction. Now a rubber band isn't gonna fit inside this. However, rubber nitrile gloves do and they give just enough traction if you just wrap the glove around the end maybe twice the thickness over the end of the allen key there and you can get it into place it was this one and it just adds a little bit of security like that and you can actually undo it so that is your first port of call to do something like that it's none damaging to the bolt none damaging to uh, your allen key as well because you're adding a bit of grip However, something important to say is always make sure you have the best Allen keys you can. Even if they're budget ones, stop using them when they start getting rounded edges on them because they will damage bolts. Regularly inspect your Allen keys, make sure they have nice sharp edges and hopefully you won't get problems like this. Okay, next up is basically fudging in a different size Allen key, Torx key, Imperial Allen key, something like that. Now, because these are four millimeter stem bolts, you can actually get a fairly good bit of purchase, although I wouldn't recommend doing it with a nice new tool, uh, with a Torx T25. It's possible because of the extra edging you get from that star profile to just get a little extra purchase. And as you can see, this bolt actually came out, but it might not always work and it is, a bit more of a bodge, so I wouldn't recommend doing this on a regular basis. You will damage your multi-tool, and of course you're gonna damage the head of the bolt, but if it's beyond repair, then it might be a good option for you. Now the other option is if you have access to an Imperial Allen key. So you get Imperial and you get Metric. Now they don't always correspond, okay, but you can get away with these sometimes. So for example, if you look on screen here, you'll see a 332, can just about go into a three and a half mil Allen key head. So if you've badly rounded out a three mil Allen key head, there is a chance you're gonna be able to jam in the 332 to undo it. And the same goes with a 732. So that will go into a five and a half mil. So a bad five mil that's been rounded out. There's a chance you can rescue it if you do have some of these laying around at home. Definitely worth a try. Okay, now we're getting serious for options three and four. Now option three has never failed me. And I have to confess, I actually got this idea from a friend. This wasn't something I came up with and it's genius, but you do require a sacrificial Allen key. So quite often when you buy a component for your bike, it may come with an Allen key. And quite often they're not always the highest quality, but keep them, keep them in the back of your toolkit because they might come in handy for something like this. And what you essentially wanna do is bond the Allen key into the head of the bolt. Now it does require a bit of precision because you don't want that, uh, I'm gonna be using arrow dart to show you this, but you don't want to get the epoxy or whatever it is you're using anywhere near anything else. Get it just the teeniest bit in the head of the bolt and literally you're gonna to have to wait for it to set, but 
as you can see, like I'm just going to put some Araldite in here now. Uh, Araldite is actually a two-part formula, so you have to mix the two together. You really don't need much. I'm just going to use a little bit of cardboard just to smear in the teeniest bit into the head of the bolt. I'm going to push the Allen key in, and then, well, you actually just have to wait now, wait for it to set. Don't be tempted though uh, to do this before it's completely set. The best advice really is to leave it overnight to make sure it's really, really hard. And then you can simply use the Allen key to undo the bolt and take it straight out. But like I said, it's a sacrificial Allen key, so uh, you won't be using that one again. Okay, and the last option, which literally never fails, but it can take a bit of perseverance, is to drill it out. So of course you're gonna need a drill for this that's got quite a good high torque power on it because you need to do this very slowly and precisely. You're gonna need some specific bits. I've got a little set here, it's actually fairly cheap. I actually got this one from Amazon. It's not really the sort of thing you use that often. I mean, if you're a pro mechanic, you'll probably have easy outs or any number of high quality versions of these, but we simply don't need them. Now essentially, if you look up close, the bits themselves, you actually use these in reverse to cut into the head of the bolt. And you would use the nearest size to the head of the bolt itself because you want to use the whole structure of that head. Now that in itself is something important to suggest. Ones that are squarer in profile like this have more material on. Now it always works with these, or at least it's always worked for me. But sometimes you get tapered ones like this. Now you can't be quite so precise and quite often you can actually break the head of the bolt off in doing this. So just be careful if you're gonna do that. Now there is one other option as well for doing this process, and that is to drill the head of the bolt clean off, i.e drilling it in with a bigger bit so the head of the bolt shears off. Now this would be a good idea to do on the cleat on the bottom of a shoe, for example, that can be rusted in sometimes. You drill the head of the bolt off, it releases a pressure on the cleat, you can literally pull the cleat straight off, and then you're left with the exposed bit of thread which will have no tension on it at that point, point. you just set pliers to undo it. But in this case, the cool way that we're gonna take it out is by screwing in a left-handed thread. Of course, as you screw in a left-handed thread with your drill in reverse, that's the direction the bolt needs to undo itself. It's a really, really cool process, but it can take a bit of time. So just take your time and it'll come out just like this. Okay, so the most important thing is to make sure your drill is in reverse because you need to be cutting it in that direction. And the same goes for the threaded bit you're gonna be using to get the bolt out. Nice and slow, lots of torque on that drill as well. Now with bigger bolts, you may need to use cutting oil, but you just wanna Get drilling in there. Don't go hammering in too fast. Keep it nice and straight. Now you might notice this stem is actually tightened up into the vise here. I'm not using any soft jaws, but you might need to do this on the bike itself, in which case you'll definitely need a friend to help you to keep the parts straight. Now you don't have to go all the way in, but you want to go far enough that those threads are going to be able to get good purchase in the head of that bolt. If you wonder why I'm in a bit of a funny position, it's just so I can monitor it. Just make sure it's staying straight. And I think that's probably about as close as I need to get in there. So let's come out on that. So this is the cool bit. Now hopefully this should work, otherwise it'll look bad on camera. But uh, again, drill in reverse, and then it should come straight out. Bingo. Bolt head straight out. Super useful bit of kit, but again, you don't always need to do it that way. There is the bonding in method with the sacrificial Allen key, the rubber method for traction, and of course, bodging in a T25 or something like that, but uh, I'll try and avoid that one if possible. But there you go, four different methods for getting out a rounded bolt. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you, uh, and I'm sure there's other methods that I've missed here. So if there's anything that you've done to get a rounded out bolt head, I'd love to know about it. Let us know in those comments underneath, and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.